I'm John Stockdyke, the editor of Accounting Web, and it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you here today to take part in our software selection webinar. Liz Eyre, who's a sole practitioner in, in Malvern. The next person in with the yellow backdrop is Mark Ryan, who is our technology guru for the morning. Uh, he's uh, he used to be a, a big firm technology uh, manager and now applies his trade uh, as the principal of Signair, a technical consultancy. And finally, we have Peter Hughes on the right, joining us from Oxford. And Peter is planning to set up a firm, um, and he'll tell us more about that. It will be Peter and Liz's um, experiences will <coughs> sort of help shape and, and, and orient what the discussion is about. But um, Mark works with firms of all sizes, and he'll bring in sort of issue lessons and perspectives that can help all of us. Just to, to set a few uh, ground rules and things, the, the company sponsoring this event is Thomson Reuters, but it is entirely independent, and it's going to be driven by Accounting Web members, and that includes Liz and Peter. Uh, but if you take part, if you have any questions for any of the panelists, if you type your comments in on the um, Cover It Live box on the left-hand side of your screen, um, I can see what's going on here. and. Um, I will be, uh, if you see me bending over and, and learning that, I'll be looking to sort of see if uh, people have raised any questions and we, we can answer them as we go along. Uh, the panelists are all independent and are appearing here in their own right, um, so I won't be putting any words in their mouth and you can put questions to them directly as well. We'll try and pass them on. And again on the issue, the idea of the webinar isn't to push a particular brand of software at you, it's to help you as a practitioner work out what your needs are and then when you know the needs you can start assessing the software and look at the technical capabilities and then get on to one of our questioners wanted to know about what's, which firms are offering sort of a cost-effective solutions at the moment. You've kind of got to know what you want to solve before and, and know what you're willing to spend on it really before you, you start getting into those. That's the sort of towards the end of your selection process. But by the time we're done, we're hoping you'll have a lot better understanding of all the types of technology currently available, where they can be applied to the, the the issues and problems you might have as a practitioner and then again with Mark's help and with some practical examples you know the steps you can take just to make sure that you do make ultimately the right choice. I qualified um, in what was a big eight firm back in the early 90s and left to practice in 1996 to go into industry so I spent the, the next 12 years in business rather than in practice. When I got made redundant, I decided to look at my lifestyle and what fitted around the family um, and set up my own practice in 2009, being part of the accounting web class of 2009. And early on, I decided I needed to look at my software strategy um, to fit with what I was doing with my business and how it was likely to grow. It's looking at how we're managing now I employ staff. We need to fit the software around all of us, not just myself. And it's are the systems fit for purpose and do they meet our needs for this year and going forward? I'm, I'm quite old. I started out um, as an accountant a very long time ago. Um, I wasn't very good at that, um, so I then started running the IT in the firm I started out with, and I've moved through two or three other accounting firms, and about 20 years ago I decided I'd rather do it myself. So I've, for the last 20 years I've been running my own consulting practice, providing, um, I call it pragmatic practice automation solutions. Um, What's causing people to change? Um, I think accounting firms have been quite quiet for the last four years, but certainly the last six to eight months, there's been a, a real big increase um, in the number of inquiries coming through to us on people wanting to change. And it's not just changing their software. It's some of them are looking to change the whole paradigm of how they want to do business. Um, and it's, I think it's the most exciting time I've had um, in this business. Um, well, I'm currently working as a, a consultant for a company over in Milton Keynes, and that should be coming to an end. But I have said that for the last two or three years, and uh, basically, I want to try and get a bit more uh, uh, control of it uh, of my work from from myself rather than from uh, you know somebody else sort of saying, "Well, yeah, okay, you can stay on for another week or another month or something like that." So uh, yeah, so I'm looking to set up a um, 
a practice. I'm particularly interested in using the uh, advances in technology over the last few years to try and make everything a lot more productive. I don't want to enter any of the data that's already being entered in again because it's such a waste of time, as we do all the time. But uh, I don't want to do that anymore. And uh, hopefully, by using these various tools from all the ways through from uh, the cloud software, from smartphones, etc., etc., we'll be able to position where I don't have to then, if I work from home, have to cover my house in paper. The other thing about uh, this this webinar is that it, it the seeds were sown back in February uh, when Thomson Reuters and Accounting Web joined forces. We ran a survey of practitioners. Um, looking at their experiences through the sort of final j month of January, and you know, and, and it was called "What Would You Do Differently?" Uh, that that came up with some really interesting results. Um, for example, 32% of the respondents still wanted to find a system to deal with incomplete records. Uh, you know, that's just the eternal challenge. Uh, we also had quite a high, or not the next highest one that was relevant was 9% were looking to integrate their tax and practice software. And we had 5% of respondents who wanted to manage their staff and their resources better. So how, how, did, how, did, how did those um, findings gel with your experience last tax season, Lou? January for us wasn't too bad because it was our third year. I think you get used to managing the clients. It's the clients who seem to cause the most problems. Some are early and some are extremely late. So it's making sure the systems are there that we can be up to date, know where we are with everyone, um, and keep the, book, the, the wheels on the wagon. We've struggled with it, and Excel seems to be the only tool that we've found that we can use um, and get a, a decent answer out of it. There aren't any systems that I've come across yet that do it for us. Mark, I, I think it's, it's maybe a sort of smaller minority, but um, you know, I, I, I see that 5% of wanting to manage the staff and resources better as a, as a bit of a cry for help. What's your advice to people who uh, you know, say you know, who've got that's the main problem they feel they're facing? Um, I've got a bit of a bad attitude about this um, and also you mentioned um, tax busy season. Um, we've had tax busy season ever since I was about 12 years of age and I really don't get why we still need to have um, a tax busy season. I think it's got a lot to do with those 5% of your respondents um, who want to manage their people and their process better because you don't need to do all your tax returns in the last two months of the year. If we were able, I mean, I know Liz mentioned the clients uh, are the ones causing the problem. Um, yeah, there are accounting firms out there who, who try to manage the clients um, rather than have the clients mismanaging the team trying to produce the tax return. And I do think the practice management and the workflow systems, I mean, your people and your resources are, what, probably 70% of your total costs. So you really need to be managing those before you start managing anything else, in my view. There are systems um, like Xero where you can pull all the bank records through. And we found that useful on some clients where they may be more um, transaction-based, and so you're pulling it through. The problem is if there's um, too many, you can't do that in Excel, but Xero will analyze it for the you. The classic answer on how to deal with the, the incomplete records problem is probably don't, um, and get the clients to do as much for it as you possibly can. And going back to what Liz said, yes, you've got to make it completely easy for them, but you've got to also decide what you're actually selling the client. Are you selling the client a service where they're going to key in all their purchase invoices onto a spreadsheet, or something, or are you selling them something more of a, a value added by looking at the numbers, dealing with the compliance and analyzing the figures and going through? And I mean, Excel is the answer to everything, I suppose. Um, but I'd, I'd suggest there are some better tools which work in a very similar way, but far more effectively. And Microsoft SharePoint has to be at the top of the list because you can make it look like an Excel spreadsheet, but you can also make it completely secure. So you're not emailing um, private information around about the place. So I'm more of a fan of portal-based, get the clients to do as much as they possibly can, and then you pick up where they leave off. It'll be different with each client. Do you advise many firms, Mark, where they use workflow tools perhaps to set up reminders or, or give clients kind of milestones and, and, and chase them, you know, automate the chasing, really? Because I think... 
there is no way around it. You've just got to stay on their, get on their case, and stay on their case to to get the data in. Do you, have you seen anybody sort of successfully crack that challenge? Um, all of my clients obviously are on the way to cracking or have already cracked it. Um, so yeah, come and give me a call. Um, I'm I'm absolutely passionate that work pro workflow processes are really top of the list because you need to know where you are in the process and you need to know if anyone's going to drop the ball it would be nice to know as they're dropping it or before they drop it uh, rather than a little bit too late. I mean the worst thing in the world is is getting a client's tax return in on time on the 28th of January and then telling them they've got a massive massive tax bill to pay when in fact if you'd have done the work in July you, you could have given them a bit of prior warning. Um, we're actually uh, a long way down the track of doing tax returns. April was uh, probably our busiest month. I think the bad weather in February and March meant a lot of clients brought their stuff in early. So we've probably got about 70% of the returns already done. And it's just those where perhaps the business has been much more successful this year and they've asked us to just give them a bit more time. But certainly we've got the majority of data already in. Right. So, so your system there is the weather system. Uh, you rely, yeah, you rely on happenstance. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, in, at some time it might be uh, quite good to to make that slightly more structured. Um, the other question, probably, Mark. You know, I, I'm I'm setting the, all of this discussion in context of preparations for tax season. Do you think at this point it's 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 feasible for people to um, actually, you know, identify a solution and get it in place to make a difference between, you know, for the January rush? Um, I'd say in terms of dealing with the technology, yes. Um, in terms of getting the software loaded, yes. Um, the two big challenges are going to be timetabling in the loading up of the data, um, because you can't really do that until you've had the training, and as we get busier and busier up towards Christmas, um, you're going to find it harder and harder to get the training slots in. So it's getting the training done and getting the data in that's going to hold you back. But if you start this afternoon by about 3 o'clock uh, and you're completely focused, you'll probably do it. I took time to think about what my end game was as to the type of client I wanted and then looked at the systems that would match my needs. So I knew I wanted something that was integrated. Um, I initially started with cheapest was the best, so um, I'll go with that. Um, and over time I changed my view and I did almost like a beauty parade of the different systems to see which one ticked the most boxes. Mm -hmm. and, and the decision there is, is, you know, you maybe had 20 boxes and it was just who got the highest score? You know, Absolutely, who, who, I prioritised yeah. those, yes. Yeah, so they had different rankings on my priorities um, and a friend of mine who runs his own um, IT company came and helped me make my final decision. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll probably come back to this because it is sort of one of the crux of the whole sessions. But, Mark, have you got any any suggestions for the aspiring startup practitioner like Liam or uh, or Peter here? Yeah, I'd, I'd say the first thing you should do is um, not look at any software at all. Um, you should really look at the business process and what are you actually trying to solve. Um, because if you start looking at software, it's like... Um, me going into a car showroom, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that, oh, that's shinier than that. I think, I mean, w w just amplifying what Liz said, going back, looking at the business process, uh, what sort of clients, what sort of work are you going to be focusing on? Um, and I, I, do, I do think it's um, ve very important to, to, to start with the, the, the business side um, and then start looking at the tools that you're going to be looking at. Okay. Um, as I say, we've got two different scenarios here, plus some of the listeners who are. We've got um, we've got another Mark here actually, who's um, using Sage uh, practice software, um, and considering a cloud solution. There's there's that's the first. Uh, I think I think Liz, you might have mentioned the, the cloud earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So again. That that's sort of more the firm in Liz's situation, looking at their options. You, you've 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 set down the principle, Mark, that they should um, really find out what kind of firm they, they they need to be and and what the functional requirements are. But would you also suggest that that firms adopt a whole sort of technology philosophy or, or over umbrella strategy? I mean, you know, for example, like going with cloud, or do you think maybe? firm people like Liz and Peter, Liam and uh, and the other Mark, you know. It, is it identify the sort of specific pain points and, and problems at the moment, 
find the solution which fits them best and then go on. Yeah, I, I, I think the cloud is um, a very good part of, of any solution that you should consider. Um, I think before you, can't, you, you consider whether to run things in the cloud or whether you're going to run things on your own premises, you ought to look about where are your people doing the work and where are your clients. Um, there, there do seem to be an awful lot of practices at the moment who are adopting this different way of working from when I was an accountant. Um, in my day, we'd all go into an office, we'd work for 10 hours, and then we'd all go home. Um, that doesn't really happen anymore. And um, I, I do think the cloud is a very valuable part of the solution. The trouble with the cloud at the moment in the accounting world is um, every vendor has a cloud solution. Um, but there isn't really the cloud doesn't really exist. It's just lots of little clouds, and these clouds don't actually talk to each other. So the problem with the cloud is until you can get every single one of your software tools into this cloud, then you're not in the cloud. And there are still an awful lot of software vendors based on the old paradigm um, where people are going into an office loading up a piece of software on a Windows computer. So we're at the cusp, really. Um, the cloud can't provide a complete solution at the moment. I think I would just add we've been going to quite a few um, trade shows, uh, the various accounting web reporters, and, and the cloud is, is, is on everybody's lips. But I think the observation I would make, uh, with, with one or two examples and, and, and some compromises, um, you know, the compliance, the, every, the, the, the profession has really woken up to cloud and is definitely moving that direction you know, over the past 13 months. I mean, I think the adoption rates from our software satisfaction survey were 42%. And so amongst the accounting web membership, I've been at a conference where pretty much exactly 40, you know, 40 percent of the audience put their hands up. So that feels like it's the benchmark at the moment. But but really, again, uh, I think for Mark in in the um, on Cover It Live, the the sort of uh, Thomson Reuters would remind me they've got a hosted solution. Uh, but apart from that, really. I, th I think I don't I think this tax season is too early. I think I think if 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 we had this conversation in a year's time, um, I think the race the race would certainly be on then. So I think it's a bit early. But the principle is, Mark, maybe hold off. If you know, if we talk about the overwhelming technology philosophy, hold off about putting everything into the cloud now. I think you should certainly start. I mean, in, in my own business, I mean, my, my team is spread all over the place um, and we very rarely meet up. Um, and we have put what we can in the cloud, but we still have servers and that's a solution that works for us. And I think that's going to be quite typical um, across accounting firms. I'm looking at it more from a security of the data perspective. Um, the problem we have is living um, on the Malvern Hills, we don't have the best broadband and I'm not a nine to five person so the minute everyone else gets home from work at six o'clock we pretty much grind to a halt. So the cloud doesn't work for us now but it's certainly something that's still on the agenda. What's cloud mean to you and, and how strongly do you feel, you, you know, how keen are you maybe to move in that direction? Oh yeah, that's uh, the area I want to, I, I, I want to go into. I, what I'm looking for is, like a lot of people, it seems like on your comments, is an end-to-end -end process where you start off with the the client entering, you know, or whenever you're getting, you know, bank feeds or however you're doing it, ending up with the submission to HMRC, you know, so it goes all the way through. So you can submit your stats, you can do whatever you need to do. You don't have to enter in the data the client's already entered. You might have to do, obviously, the various things for the accounting aspects of it, but, you know, it just, basically, the data, the basic uh, information is there, and you, and you just carry on using it all the way through. You know, what I don't want to do is have, you know, a tool for, uh, you know, the, the, the client to use, which you then transfer into your Excel tool, which you then transfer it into your, your, your tax software, because, you know, it's just a waste of time. And, uh, you know, you probably make mistakes as well, and obviously that's going to cost even more time. So that's what I'm looking for. And if Mark's saying there isn't a proper uh, cloud solution out there already, which I can well <laughs> believe from, you know, because all these people say these things, but, you know, you know what they're like, then you might, uh, you might be worthwhile, you know, not actually doing anything particularly, uh, you know, complicated at the start and just keeping it uh, 
simple. It's always, always, there's always a, um, you know, a very, it's always a very good idea to keep it as simple as you possibly can. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's also take a leaf out of Mark's uh, advice notebook there because you are really still in the sort of planning and preparation phase. So, so and and I probably I probably made a mistake there in in process terms by by waving the cloud in front of you when when you're not really you know you're not really at that point making those you know, making those decisions T could you tell us a little bit more about what kind of firm you want to build and ha and and you know have you have you identified the type of clients you want to work with because some of these issues may well shape the tools you need to to then serve them yeah, I mean, as I'm, as I'm sort of trying to mention, it's going to be sort of one where you do have the clients who are particularly interested in, in embracing this new sort of um, the technology so that you can say to them, you know, I'm working as efficiently as I possibly can and you're not having to pay me for doing all the sort of aspects which you've already done, which, you know, I, I know happens already at, at the moment. So basically, what, for people who are interested in all these sort of, of using uh, the your accounting online or getting it directly from, from the bank, for example, you know, because I know that some of the banks are now trying to introduce these, their own end-to-end, -to -end, well, not end-to-end, -end, but their own packages where you can, you know, accounts production is done, and they just got the digital feed coming straight from their, from the bank as well, which, you know, let's hope, let's hope they get the credits and debits right around for a start, but hey. Peter, uh, going on to your clients, um, are you anticipating, you know, going for for business clients mainly, and that you might get some personal tax work, you know, from the directors, off the end of that? You know, what is is what nature of of serve, you know, what will be the main service lines you're looking to provide? Um, I mean, it's just you know, that's obviously the hard part to get all to to try and find all of of your clients. The first one I get would probably you know, that would be a sort of like obviously. Yeah. Assemble a moment and all that sort of thing, but um, it, it, I mean, you know, you always read about all these people who are starting out their own businesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there obviously is, uh, you know, a vast amount of people out, out there who are, are, you know, are going to need help and everything. And you know, just with the end of this thing, with the um, with with the change in, in the child uh, benefit, for example, you know, there must be, you know, what are they saying, four hundred thousand people out there haven't registered or something, and they all got to do um, self-assessment, you know. And I've just got to try and work out what the fines actually are, so we can tell all these people that you know you pay me this and uh, I'll save you that, etc. So there's you know, obviously a lot happening, a lot going on, and a lot of uh, opportunities. But you know there are lots of accountancy firms out there as well. So uh, so this is your new market niche. I, I think maybe you should go hang out around uh, Waitrose, uh, you know, or or, uh, or John Lewis shops and uh, <laughs> look look for the people with the the nice four by fours and and uh, and big families. I, I think I think you may be onto a market niche there. Uh, can I just butt in on on that one? Yeah, um, it's, it's Mark. Uh, yeah, Peter, I, I think you're in a really lucky position because you can also not only think about what clients you want, you can also think about um, what is the end product. I mean, I've started. Well, I've been having this debate with a few clients now over the last couple of months. Is you know what it, what is the end product that we are supplying our clients with? You know, what is a set of accounts? Um, a set of accounts as far as company's house is concerned is just a boring stream of XML data that gets posted up there via some electronic feed. That's a set of accounts. Or is a set of accounts, I mean, you mentioned the banks, um, what do they want? Well, they just want a few numbers to put into their risk management system to make sure that your facility is going to be there next year. And then the other user of the accounts is is the client themselves. Now, you're not just going to show them, are they going to want to go and look through 22 pages of notes to the accounts? No, they're probably not. They just want to know, how have I done this year? What am I going to do next year? So I think the old, what is a set of accounts? What is a tax return? I think the whole paradigm has shifted, and it's not that here's a tax return, sign it, here's a set of accounts, sign it anymore. It means different things to different people, and it's a really good opportunity, I think. Well, I mean, you know, whenever I hear people saying paradigm shifts, I always think, well, you know, what goes around comes around, or, you know... <laughs> I make a living making people do things. Etc. etc. Because, you know, I well remember back in the, uh, in the middle... 90s, you know, with all the uh, IT revolution, you know, I remember going to a conference about this particular company. Andrew Neil was doing things, saying this way of doing expenses was a paradigm shift and all this sort of thing. But when it comes down to it, I would have thought that if you're, um, depending on what sort of 
of your client's UI, you've got two areas. You've got obviously the statutory responsibilities you have got to do, otherwise HMRC or Companies House will come and find you, and you've got to avoid that. You know, and you need to get that done. And obviously, then you have to run your business, and you run your business is the vast and most important thing you have to do. And you want to get the statutory stuff out of the way as quickly as possible, with no effort to yourself as you can, and not have to pay too much to anybody for it. You know, and so you can. What we need to be able to do, or what I would like to do, is to satisfy those statutory responsibilities as easy as possible without having, you know, to do extra work all the time from work that's already been done. And then, obviously. Um, to help the 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 uh, client with his business. Now, one of the things I've noticed, because they've obviously been looking around quite a few uh, accountant websites, is that they're all proactive. Now, I know quite a few accountants who say they're proactive, and they're not proactive at all. They get it in once a year, bang, get it out. Thank you very much, and uh, can I have my money, please? You know, and so all these accountants who say they're proactive, are they really going back to their guys and saying, well, you know? I had to charge you this much this year because you did your uh, your um, your bank and your, your all your analysis on a, a paper book, you know, in the cash book, you know, and you could actually do it on Excel, and I'm going to help you to put it in Excel, and all all those kind of things which can actually, you know, work with your clients to try and save their time and you, your time. So that's a sort of area that I'm very interested in. Okay, um, I've got one other thing for you, Peter. So, so it does sound you are. Looking for you know to be quite go ahead. Does that include your own business? Are are you looking for kind of a lifestyle? You know, a little something. You know, just working on your own, tending your 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 sort of you know favoured clients, or do you want to sort of build a quite a, you know find dynamic businesses, help them grow, and grow your own practice on the back of that? You know, how 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 growth oriented are you going to be? Because again, that's going to affect your software investment and and selection. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, sort of. The, yes, I'm. I'm. I'm, in, I'm certainly interested in you know, growing my practice from zero, <laughs> which would be nice. But uh, I mean, you know, I, I want it to be as um, you know, as I can make it as successful as it possibly can be. Really, you know, it's just a question of I have to see how how it happens. I mean, you know, you have to sort of be uh, reasonably flexible in, in these things. You know, in terms of you have a mix of your practice between you know you have some maybe a day a week helping a business as sort of you know a part time FD or FC, and then you obviously have your clients as well. You know, not all your eggs in one basket sort of thing that would be the area. Another area but I'm particularly interested in pensions as well, and what people can do to try and you know make sure they have some sort of a viable uh, plan for their uh, retirement because obviously that's a, a mm -hmm. massive issue for everybody and with all these firms and they charge such high prices for uh, you know setting up pension schemes and stuff like that and, and, and the administration of it just seems to, be, to me to be an area where we need to um, to try and help people out with. Peter it it seems that that we're already moving away from the you know you're looking for the, that that magic high net worth individual who's running a a uh, an you know an entrepreneurial and fast growing company the, the the kind of clients every accountant wants. Well, but, yeah. sorry, to a certain extent, I'm not because I know what they're like. And they're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> my ex boss, my ex boss, was this classic high net worth. We used to go down to the accountants. He used to shout at them all the time, and you know, give them such hell that I those high net worth individuals would just be a complete, you know. Uh, but hey, you you put it. So, so you're looking okay. Let's so, so, so the ideal client is is a reasonable growth entrepreneur who's thinking, you know, more about pensions and retirement. That, that's so the the pensions admin and if you're doing IFA work and you know there's there's regulatory and possibly sort of kind of slightly more demands on more demands coming up uh, on the paperwork and 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 documenting your your advice and things. So so that's. That's an interesting area, but as I say, I think we're moving away from uh, Excel. One of our, our commenters wanted to know when you talked about the cloud, are you thinking in terms of working exclusively with clients who will interact with you in the cloud? Is that do you think that might be a criterion you would impose on the clients as you recruit them? <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, I'd like to. I'm not interested in, as I said, filling up where I live with. Mm -hmm. paper and getting all these books and having all these plastic bags and shoe boxes everywhere. I'm particularly un uninterested in that. I mean, there's a friend of mine who, I, who 
people's house that they got to go around to, and it's a it's a it's, it's a death trap, you know, because or wind, for example, wind yeah. would be a nightmare at his house because he'd be completely destroyed. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's um, it's an area I'd like you know I'd like them to be interested in embracing all these new ways of trying to the paradigm, you know, the paradigm. Mm -hmm. yeah. All these new ways of trying to make your work as efficient as you possibly can and, and productivity. Because you know how much time we all waste. Yeah. Yeah, can, can I just butt in on the paperless thing? Um, my, yeah, my own business has been paperless now for um, just coming up for four years. And when I say paperless, um, I mean the only paper I've got left um, is a load of certificates, some blue forms to do with cars, some insurance papers, and a letter from HMRC saying they didn't mind if I scanned and shredded everything. And as soon as you go paperless, it's it gives you a whole new way of working. You can have two people looking at a document at the same time, you and the client. You can you can be away from the office and you can pick up the file. You can open the morning post. And it really, really does making working um, much, much easier. And also for security, um, I would say that firms really should try to go paperless. I, I know it's not going to happen, but it's worth the effort to get rid of as much paper as you possibly can. Would you insist or, or would you really push him towards a solution where the document management integrates with all the other tax and practice tools? You know, or, or, or is that an add-on that you can be quite free and easy with? You know, if you're just putting things up into a portal, is there quite a flexible selection there? Yeah, I, I think in terms of integrating your document management with the rest of the practice, um, very few of the integrated systems vendors have decent um, document management, which is on a par with their mainstream applications, is one thing. And there are other vendors in the market um, who do document management, and they specialize in document management. They actually do it rather well. Um, there's a company called Microsoft that does SharePoint. You can have it online. You can have it wherever you want it. Um, and I'd, I'd say it's more important to get rid of the paper as the first step. Yes, it would be lovely to have your um, document arriving triggering a workflow process which triggers a tax return, which triggers a filing at um, HMRC. But I think, let's be realistic here, let's just get rid of the paper as the first step um, and then think about integrating it with all the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Liz, you have been itching to get a few words in. And, and you are where Peter probably wants to be in three, four years' time. Yes, um, yeah. So, so let us, or, or just before you sort of maybe give us a background, are you have you gone down the paperless route? Have you got an instant answer for for Peter, or, or you know advice for those who who want to pursue the the route Mark's uh, suggesting? Um, if anyone saw our office, they'd know we haven't gone paperless. Um, we are trying to scan in as much as we can, and we keep those on client files, and we're moving towards SharePoint. Um, we've been using Dropbox for quite a while and a lot of our clients scan all their paperwork in and we receive that through Dropbox. Um, but uh, when it comes to tax returns, the person who was asking about doing that paperless, we because everything is filed electronically, we send electronic copies to, to clients who they can then either put on the email that they approve it or they sign it and scan it back in and then yeah. we keep that electronically. Are, are you sending the return to them via email? Um, we're trying to use Dropbox as much as we can with clients. Um, we're looking at how we can perhaps use SharePoint to give people their own access to their files. But again, that's early days for us. Okay. Well, again, now let, let's hear more about Liz Air, the the um, the, uh, the firm. Um, you know, are there particular characteristics about your practice that have shaped your software decisions so far? Um, one that started very early on was because we went for businesses. We were quite fortunate starting in the middle of a recession people thought I was mad but there were a lot of people who were being made redundant and decided to set up their own businesses with not really much of a clue how to start and we picked up a lot of clients from that respect and it's um, been quite a journey in that we started off with fairly small firms but then we soon got LLPs and found a lot of the software firms just couldn't uh, cope with LLPs so we had to then look at our solution and what was going to cover all our types of clients um, we have a couple of CICs now, um, and we've got a couple of limited by guarantee charities. So we've got all a real breadth of clients, um, and we still get the shoe boxes in. Hmm. Um, it's how we then put those through the process. Did did the the need for those niche um, accounts, final accounts formats, was 
you know, when you said you had your priorities for selecting the software, how, how high up were those? Is, you know, was that something almost that, that determined the choice, a, a much wider choice? Yeah, I certainly didn't want to be using multiple solutions. I wanted one that would do everything for us so we weren't having to swap systems all the time. Um, a, a key solution was also, we talked about accounts. I do like them to look nice. I didn't want them to look like an Excel spreadsheet that had just been cobbled together. So to me, the only thing a client sees most of the time is their set of accounts. So it's important for me that it looks good. Right. Okay. Can, I, can I just nip, nip in on that um, software selection by looking at your client base? Um, I, I would say that when you get to um, the selection process, Peter, um, whatever you do, don't let whoever the vendor is, don't, let, don't use their data to test the software. Um, get one of your own clients, is it an LLP, is it an overseas domicile, minister of religion, whatever it is, put your own data through their software. Don't let them use their data. And the other thing, um, when you're comparing, I'd say, both tax and accounts compliance packages, is that um, produce a set of accounts and let them show you how to do it with your data, but then print out a set of accounts and then, and then post some adjustments either to your tax return or to your um, set of accounts because where I do find um, some of these programs fall over is they're very good at producing the first draft set of accounts but then it's a, a real pain to post some adjustments and then regenerate all the stuff that you need to do. Um, so have a go at both of those, they're top tips for today. What advice would you give to Peter about his um, his sort of selection options and things? I mean I know we talked about uh, initially he, he he was looking for some of the lower cost, you know, Excel based tools. Or you know, that that was a week ago. I think I think our, our initial <laughs> chat, you know, seems to have shaped him already. But uh so having been through it, what 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 advice would you pass on to Peter about his choices? I would certainly say don't rush into it, um, because the first system that you come across won't always be the one that will see you through in your business. Um, as you grow, the data that you have becomes so much more, and the thought of changing system now really would fill me with dread. So you, you, know, you need to think about where you want to be with your business and take your time over that decision. And could could you tell us about where your systems are now? You know, what what have you got installed? What modules are, are you know, kind of giving you the most return on investment and, and the characteristics that, that you went for, are, are they living up to your expectations? Yeah, I'm using the Digita software and I started off with um, the basic application. I used accounts production, the um, personal and business tax and also corporation tax. And I found that was working well and I liked the fact it was all integrated. But as time has gone on, I've added more of their um, modules to it. So the last one I added was the um, company secretarial and I didn't think I would need it initially because it is fairly expensive compared to some of the others but I found it extremely valuable and, and now I'm even uh, where, where I do dividend vouchers for clients everything's coming through company secretarial and it's all linked together. So it's looking at um, also is will the system grow with your business um, not just what you need now, right now. Are, are you in the market for any new modules or functionality? I mean, we talked about paperless possibilities, but are there other things, you know, if you could, if, if when you have the time, that you might look at more actively? The one that I don't use is practice management. That's all on a big whiteboard in the office, um, and as we go through, we wipe out who's doing what and and then move it on to the next stage. So we haven't automated practice management in any way so that would be the next thing to look at. I've got three staff currently and as that grows I think we should become more sophisticated. Could you deal with Liz's specific situation? Uh, you kind of bang the desktop figure to, or metaphorically about managing resources um, and, and technologies. Can you identify any any technology, so you know, I mean, Liz may not even be aware of the you know, the next challenge she's going to hit. Could you sort of offer any advice in her direction, and then take us on a step, and maybe you know, offer some more points. I think you're you're suggesting about the testing with the vendors. Um, how about advice on on you, you've, we're working out the functionality you think we might want, but any advice about budgeting? for your investment and are there any principles you might suggest so, so specific advice for Liz and then maybe what budget might be realistic or is there a, a, a return on investment formula that, that she could use to sort of see whether an investing would be viable or not right I think if that's not too wrapped up 
Yeah, in in terms of managing managing the people and the process, um, you've already got the whiteboard, which is a list of the people, a list of the clients, a list of the deadlines. Um, you can do that very easily. I would suggest mm -hmm. that you go for a system that you can uh, that you can get at from anywhere. So let's use the cloud word again. Um, so you you can replicate your whiteboard even um, on a on a SharePoint front end, or you can look at it on your your Apple device or your Android device or whatever. Um, and then you've got the ability where if you've got one of your colleagues is working on the job, if a client phones up and says, "How are you getting on?" you know straight away. Um, so I, I, I do think that is a good application for something shared so the team can then collaborate. And, and eventually you'll also cl collaborate with the client so they'll have some idea about when to expect to get the stuff from you and, and what the process is that you're in. So if they understand what you're doing, then they're less likely to mismanage you in January. Um, just going back to John, in terms of a budget, um, I've always said if there was a book, the book would say you're spending 4 to 5 percent on your of your turnover on technology and that's just to keep still. If you're going to be making developments and changing and moving forward, you're going to be spending 8 to 10 percent of turnover. Now most accountants in practice look at that and just think I'm completely crazy. But if you <laughs> but if you <laughs> but if you that's add crazy. it all if you add that's it all crazy. up um, and you look at all the blind alleys you go down and, and the cost of your time, um, you're probably approaching those numbers anyway. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, on, on that subject, we had quite, quite a good question just came in from Chris Scullard, and it's very related. He's, we've talked about workflows and resources. He wants to know if there's any uh, practice management software that allows you to track profitability. Have you run across anything that... that could could sort of combine. I guess it's combining the uh, the, the 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 billing figures uh, with, with 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 your time, and if 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 you're not going down the value pricing route. But uh, do, do you do you know of any good solutions or, or approaches to have kind of real time or you know better sight on your pro client profitability, which is quite important at tax season, I imagine. Yeah, in in terms of profitability on on the clients, I mean there are. Um, all the major vendors have got practice management solutions where you you can put your timesheets in. Um, there is really only one major vendor with a pure cloud solution, which of course is Practice Engine, but all of the other vendors do have um, on-premises or hosted solutions um, where you can do your timesheets. I, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of timesheets, but as a costing tool rather than a valuing tool, because the value really is the fixed price on what the market can take. Um, and as, as long as people are putting timesheets in and they're doing it honestly, I mean, I still come across firms where um, everyone's putting in timesheets and they're all booking exactly 35 hours a week um, and it's just, they're just lying on their timesheets. If, if people are honest on their timesheets, not in terms of valuing it and bragging to your colleagues or whatever, but in terms of understanding the true cost of the job, you have to be honest and put a realistic price on your own time as well. Okay, Liz. Um, do you think you you can you know have you got data to your fingertips? You know, does your can your whiteboard give you an indication? You know, can you tell your A, B, and C clients from from the progress and and you know resources expend that are monitored on your whiteboard? Not from the whiteboard, but we do use timesheets, and I keep those. I actually use QuickBooks timesheets, and for billing, and I can get then reports off of hours spent per client and income, and I then will put that through a graph, and it will show um, kind of hours against their price, and shows which clients are nearest the line or but maybe below or above, so we can see then who we're making a, a good return on, and those where we need to work you know harder on. And is, is that perhaps a kind of a February task, or will you be, be able yes. to... Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, so, so I mean, that really is... Um, to respond to Mark's question, do you, do you think you meet his uh, 4%, 4 uh, or 5% uh, technology threshold? Um, I certainly think we do spend a fair amount because the systems that we have um, aren't the cheapest, but also I'm always looking how we can improve those processes. Yeah, and and... Do you have ways of measuring the return you get on that? Do you, do you just think it, it feels good and it's working for you, or do you do you look at, at the kind of growth you post and and 
the, the revenue you're making and, and assess whether, whether the, that investment in technology is paying off? What I've done is look at the cost per client of all, all the different elements. So within the systems, we, we may use them more or less on each client. And I add that then into factoring how much it's cost us. Okay, and it just funds. So, um, Peter, we're, I, I'm, I won't put you on the spot and ask you what your revenue figures are at the moment, but that probably um, <laughs> makes your investment, your, 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 your budget for, for your equipping your firm a little bit... Um, Difficult to define. Let's be polite about it. Um, so, so that's your situation there. Is there a is there a, a ceiling to what you know when you do go spend? Is there a ceiling you've put on the on on uh, how much you'd like to spend? Just uh, to... No, no. Okay. Well, one obviously we've got to be realistic, hasn't it? I mean, you know, I, there's an awful lot of them seem to do you know per client and you know cost per month per client, etc., etc. So that it's going to take a little bit of time to actually uh, have a look at these and see what sort of uh, different offerings that they have. But in the end, I guess you've got to go with the one which was going to have it the best uh, bang for its buck, I guess. But uh, to actually know what that is at the moment, uh, I, I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm based. I'm always tending to go towards keep it as simple as you possibly can. I just think it's really, these things are really easy to uh, over overcomplicate. So um, I have to see. Okay, well, to wind things up, I think I'll, I'll just go here. I think um, we will have to finish, um, but I will put a challenge to, to Mark and Liz before I sort of summarize very briefly. Um, Mark, starting with you, can you, based on what you've heard from Peter, can you have you seen or could you recommend a kind of entry-level package? And for uh, Peter, can you think of something out there and how much do you think he might need to spend to be primed and ready to start picking up those... Um, those uh, high, those DHI, the high income benefit, child benefit, uh, ta registered ta self self assessment taxpayers at, at uh, Waitrose in Oxford. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to recommend um, any any particular product. Um, if you look on accounting web and similar places, um, you'll you'll see it's the same the same vendors come up all the time. Uh, I think that the the final tip I want to give you really is when you come to the software selection phase, um, don't just go to the vendor and say, please, can I have a copy of your software to play on? Um, because you'll never get around to playing on it. You don't know how to use it properly. And I, I think it, it gives an unfair view on how capable or otherwise that piece of software is. Okay, and Liz, can you can you give Peter a ballpark recommend? Because you've been there, you know, what, what, mm -hmm. what did it take you to get up and running? It was very much about the types of clients I wanted to work with and how much I wanted it to be integrated. I wanted the software to do as much as possible for us um, without us having to keep having to get involved in it. Okay, so, so and would you suggest anything to Peter or, or have you got a ballpark figure? Um, again, each system is different and has its own merits. Um, I do like digital and I've been really pleased with it. Um, I think you need to be looking at spending you know, a few thousand, not just a few hundred. Right. Okay, well, thank you all. We will. We did promise we were going to let it run for about 50 minutes maximum. There's there's a, there's a whole separate debate going on the um, cover it live. So I think what we'll do is is as a lot of those were saying, is this product better than that product? And again, the point I would emphasise on all is is that firms are different, their characteristics are different, and their priorities are different. So so it's really not is one software better than the other, it's which is the best match for those specific characteristics. I mean, Mark, is that a principle you'd yeah, abide I'd, by? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's compare a Ferrari with a tractor, which is best. What are you doing with it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so that's principle. You know, it's, it's know what you want and why you want it and, and maybe, you know, what the outputs are, what the kind of delivery and service your clients are expecting. Uh, we didn't touch on mobile. I'm sorry about that, but then that might be something, Peter. And in fact, even Liz, with you, uh, if is is your 3G um, okay? You know, three and 4G reached Malvern. Could you could you, <laughs> you know, service clients more effectively if you could sort of buzz their uh, their tax return across to to a you know a mobile pickup site? You know, can they Dropbox Dropbox um, their uh, tax return and approve it from their laptop? You know, from their tablet. Um, we do have clients who um, like using their iPhone for zapping receipts to us, um, so and they do get to us eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so principles, you know, know your needs, uh, define your budget. I think the 
investment level mark suggests it is a good one. You know, it's, it's a benchmark to compare with, you know, is that a reasonable investment for your firm? Um, I think none of us really feel, or, or I think it's good to have a technology direction, but sometimes what's actually available may not may not live up to the direction, or may tie you down and hold you back if you if you you know do buy the software equivalent of a Betamax. Um, so staying informed, I think, is one of the good things to do, and I hope we help you do that on Accounting Web. Uh, and find, and and that this is all to do with the cloud. It is the buzzword at the moment. I think the expectations are building. I, I don't think everything is there. For, you know, Peter. I, you know, maybe the timing will work for you, Peter. I, I, I think if the developers and and the practitioners have the space to go to really get onto the cloud, I think that could happen. Uh, kind of after after January 31st. So it, maybe when you do make your choice, come back to us. Let you let us know what where you've gone, and and we'll try and document with that. So we hope that this session has. We've probably raised more questions than we've answered today, but Mark will try and compile both comments in this session and on Cover It Live into sort of a summary document with a few more practical pointers. Uh, it, it's as I say, we I could go on for ages, but I know people have clients and tax returns to see to it and, and tea and coffee and lunch to eat. So thank you all for your time. Uh, we hope to see you again at another online accounting web webinar. And good luck for the rest of the week, the rest of the year, and for self-assessment 2014. Thanks again, all. Bye-bye.